Picture this. It's 7.30 a.m. and you're on the road, driving to school. There's a bit of heavy traffic and you've been changing lanes every few minutes, only to enter the new slow lane. You left the house 12 minutes later than usual after calling your coach and telling him that you won't be able to make it to practice tonight due to important club meetings, two assignments due, babysitting your cousin, and a midterm this week. He doesn't take that call lightly, threatening to bench you for the next few games because it's the third time you've called in the past month. As you sit there, impatiently in your vehicle, you think about how your sleep average will be dropping down to four hours a night. Why in the world did you sign up for so many commitments? Now, my first year of university sounded a lot like that story. So I'd like to ask, who here has ever felt the feeling of FOMO, AKA the fear of missing out? Today, with so many different events and opportunities surrounding us, it's often difficult to pass them by. Yet, when we enter the cycle of constantly stretching ourselves out too thin, rather than getting closer to our goals, we often end up feeling lost and overwhelmed. There was a period of time a couple years ago where I felt like I was putting 110% of my effort into school and friends and sports and extracurriculars, yet I wasn't seeing any growth or personal development. In fact, I didn't think I was doing very well in anything. As I learned, hard work and results don't always exist as a simple one-to-one -one ratio. Passion, time, and energy have huge parts to play as well. And then it dawned on me, when we drive too fast, it becomes difficult to stay centered in our lane. Amidst the storm of commitments, low visibility, and poor driving conditions of post-secondary, I took a breather to center myself. <sighs> Which lane was I taking? I was driving in so many different directions at once, each leading to their own forks in the road ahead that I didn't even know where I was trying to go. You've likely heard numerous times that it takes courage to start something new. It takes courage to commit to believe in yourself and take on another task. Yet, how about the courage to think about what you really value, where you want to allocate your time, as well as the courage to say no and quit? Because quitting, despite what we are often told, can be a positive and powerful force for change. If you want to make a big contribution to something you value, you got to put time into that. And the more times we mindlessly say yes to things we know we won't be able to keep our word on, the less we'll have for what drives us forward. If you have 10 cars and only one full tank of gas, no car is going to go very far. So you need to think about your priorities before agreeing to attending another event or joining another club only because your friend asked you to and you don't want to hurt their feelings. As easy as it is to tell someone you will, ask yourself, will you really? I know how hard it is to decline, but when we say yes, we're suddenly accountable for all of our promised actions, whether we do them or not. Now, you don't need tunnel vision to block out people trying to cross in front of you or other cars trying to merge. These things will inevitably happen, but rarely do they stop you from getting to your destination. Now, think of a time when you made a plan for the day and a lot of it was left unfinished because something else came up. We've all had that and you need to plan a little bit of buffer time into each day. Unforeseen roadblocks and inconvenient construction zones exist. If your list is not doable, your mind is going to tell you to just stop trying. So make it realistic and think about your values first. Be kind to yourself. You've made it this far. Sometimes it's essential to slow down, check your map, and reroute if you took a wrong turn. Today, with so much information around us in the form of media, everything can seem very overwhelming. If you want to make a quantifiable impact, find a niche or an issue that really speaks to you and see how you can connect it with something you're good at. In November 2019, I had the privilege of speaking to Connor Curran, the founder of Local Laundry, a community-centered, Calgary-based clothing line. He founded this company because he saw an opportunity to connect Calgarians with locally made garments as well as support community charities. And Connor gave me a piece of business advice that transcends the social enterprise context. He said, you have to give up some lower priority things in your life in order to put enough time into large scale dreams and projects. He dropped his FOMO and he reiterated the reason why he started local laundry in the first place. 
He put his time and energy into building his company. And today, you probably now recognize this iconic YYC logo. Whatever you do, whether it's large scale, like starting a business, or small scale, like journaling, having passion for both the idea and the action will take you further and allow for easier prioritization. And so, after this talk, I challenge each and every one of you to spend 10 minutes and write down a list of all the things you're currently juggling, all the things that you must do, and all the things you've chosen to do. Below each item, I want you to write down the value of this activity and why you do it, whether it's so you can keep your grades up or stay healthy, make time for the people you value, or simply just to keep your gears turning. Whatever it is, these things are on your list for a reason. You don't necessarily need to rank them, but think about the why. Roadside attractions are awesome and worth seeing, but you won't be able to see every single one. Sometimes we have to choose our pit stops wisely and be mindful of potholes, barriers, and obstacles along the way. Now, you won't be able to keep your wheels straight if you're spinning your head from side to side, monitoring what others are doing, sulking about why you're being passed, or looking back with regret. To focus means to wipe your windshield and bring clarity to your priorities. Let go of the baggage you no longer need. I want you to think about that list of values that you made and use that as fuel. And so, I leave you with this. My coach once told me, after a series of bad races, to just focus on myself. And he was right. Focus on your own lane, on your own race, and on your own pace. Keep your eyes on the road. Thank you.